And I'm Gil. And we're the Beavers. If you're watching this video, it means you've either found us, our podcast, Rich Relationships, or you're actually considering listening. The first episode was called It's Not About Me, It's About Us. And our next episode is called Is Pie Destroying Your Life? It's not the kind of pie you're thinking about. It's not the kind that you eat. And it's the kind that can cause real damage to your relationship. So you don't want no pie. You don't want this kind of pie. You don't want no pie. So come and check out episode two. You can find us on richrelationshipsus.com or your favorite podcast platform, whichever you want you just happen to be using. So please remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow. Good. Good job. All right. Yay. Welcome, everybody. This is show after I don't know how long, but anyway, I want to welcome all of you that are coming online um, to watch this broadcast. I'm here with uh, Renee and Gil Beaver, and we are going to be just talking about rich relationships tonight. Listen, I need you to share and pass this broadcast. If you can't do it now, definitely do it once we're done. We're in casual settings tonight because that's just how. That's just what's happening tonight. We're excited about the casual setting. So uh, we have a lot to talk about, not a lot of time, but I want to get right to it and welcome them. Listen, Renee has been on the show before, um, the Triumphant Radio Show, about a year ago. Um, I was just so impressed by um, everything that is connected to her, not only hearing her testimony of health, but also hearing about um, the healthy eating and how we should eat. I even had the privilege to try some of the um, awesome food that was so healthy. And you would think that, oh, it may not taste too good, but I'm telling you, I learned a lot and I don't know why I have not ordered more. <laughs> it was those cookies that really got me, Renee. It was those cookies. So I have to get some more. But I want you all to listen to the broadcast tonight. They're an awesome couple. Um, they have really a lot of richness under their belt as it, as it pertains to just a healthy lifestyle, healthy living. And you know what? That does not come without obstacles. And the beautiful thing about the obstacles is they have been able to be transparent enough to share, you know, how to get through their testimony and so much more. So those of us that are single, those of us that are married, we can truly learn so much from them. And I definitely want to make sure that you all begin to follow them um, on their social media platforms, which we'll go over tonight. So Renee and Gil, again, welcome to the Triumphant Show. We're happy that you're here. And I just want you to, first of all, just share with those that are listening and viewing just about rich relationships, how it got started, and how all of this turned into a podcast. Well, I'll start it out because it's, it's like you said, Renee was in front of the camera with you the last time we were together. And I was behind the scenes shooting the pictures and everything. And actually, the, the <laughs> yeah. way this actually got started was that's right. You were. We, had, we had heard a message at our church. And it was about what's next. That was the title of the series that we were talking about. And surprisingly enough, I came to Renee and asked her, what about a podcast? You know, she was looking at me like, what are you talking about? A <laughs> podcast. So I told her after, wow. you know, we, we have wow. we married 31 years this year. And I felt it's time for us to start sharing some of the information that We've just been working through, obviously, because it's a journey that you go through marriages. And so we just said, you know what? Yeah, we're going to be hot right. this time. We like to say hot. Because Honest, open and transparent. <laughs> so we decided we're going to open up our relationships to others. Right. And hopefully they can love it. glean something from that. So that was really the birth of the podcast. We know nothing about it. Uh, we just re uploaded episode 29, I think, last week or something right before the holidays. So they can go out and binge wow. listen if they want and catch up on some of those episodes. You got about three months worth of stuff to episodes, listen to. Yeah. And we're going to be still continue to record. So that's where right. we actually started okay. it. That was just a brief kind of overview of how we actually birthed it, you know, and got started. And it was really led really by God, you know, just deciding that it's time to start sharing what he's put yeah. on the inside of us with others. Because we, we have been working with couples, uh, doing couples mentoring and coaching and premarital for years and some of that information oh, wow. we just decided to to share with others so that was really the a brief overview of how we actually got started in the podcasting realm and you know the thing that i was really right. and i knew it right. had to be the lord 
for Gil to come from behind the scenes to come into the front. And I don't think he really knew what it was going to entail when he no. opened up this um, <laughs> desire oh. to share what we're going through because he thought we were just going to be, you know, doing the podcast and sharing messages. But, you know, God always does exceedingly above all we can ever ask, think, and imagine. And so just like this opportunity to share right. with your, your community and on this platform. It's not just, I think that right. God wants us just to be willing to be a vessel that he can work through. And then he decides how it's going to actually all work out. And so we're just open to that. And thank you for yeah. having us. I'm excited to be here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that is so awesome. So let me ask you all this. Um, in terms of when I know, Renee, you have a testimony of health. Did that play a role in terms of? how stable or unstable of seasons or were there seasons of that while you were going through a healing process and changing your lifestyle? Um, as far as seasons of things being unstable, as far as in our marriage, or you mean as far as in my health? Um, in the marriage, with your <laughs> health and then in the marriage, was, was, did that make any difference in terms of um, how... how you all really had to fight stronger in terms of staying on one accord. Um, I kind of want to just give the audience and the viewers and the listeners kind of a nugget in terms of when you're going through something, um, you know, how important it is to kind of still be connected. How did that work for you all? I will probably say our biggest struggles were not my health. It was our families. It was my mother being murdered by a serial killer. Wow. Us having to adopt a nine and a 10 year old when our baby was only, um, one. oh, she was not even one years old yet. Moving around in the military and having to start over and over, you know, my business over and over and over again. So we've had lots of um, trials. trials and rockiness in our marriage. And I think all those things have kind of taught us that. God and our marriage is the one thing that we have to hold on to and we have to make it our priority because right. kids grow up and move away, family problems dissolve and dissipate and yeah. dissolve, but you have to make your marriage, the commitment to your marriage, the priority. And you have to realize that when you say till death do us part, you have to be willing to really know what that means and learn how. And I think a part of what the podcast, what made the podcast so important for us was people tell you to work on your marriage, mm -hmm. but no one ever shows you what that means or how to do yeah. that or what that looks like. And so that's what I would have to say. The That's what has really made the podcast good for us because not only are we sharing the, our past struggles, we're also sharing things we're going through day to day, things we're learning. So it's not just we're teaching, we're also learning. That's powerful. That's really powerful because um, so many people do not get the opportunity to get firsthand knowledge or experience from um, a couple tangibly. Right. And so they might just read something or they may just hear something. And so to hear that, that's phenomenal. Now, Gil, when you were in the Air Force, I know you were in the Air Force for a period of time. Were you all separated at night in terms oh, of yeah. um, or oh, were you wow. on the station <laughs> in the same location? Oh, Both. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I retired after 22 and a half years. And during that time, we probably had, I would say, at least seven or eight major times of separation. Mm -hmm. And what was really instrumental, I think, during Woo! that time was um, and that time varied in length from a couple days up to almost a year. A whole year so months. it just varied in time and length. And and we've always used that, wow. time, that time to actually. Um, kind of work on ourselves, but also work on our relationship when we got back together. So it was it was challenging, no, without a doubt. You know, any military family or deployed member can experience right. that, especially if they're married. You know, even if you're single, you're separated. You know, from your family or your support system, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Renee is a big support system for me, just like I, I am for her. So that was really a big deal, you know, so yes, the military right. definitely plays a, a factor in, in those times of separation and the challenges that come along with it, Amen. you know. And, you know, to me, people always talk about absence makes the heart wander. And I think that absence can either make the heart wander or hmm. grow fonder. I think it's just the condition of the heart. So I don't think that the absence of the time apart is the, the condition of your heart. 
I think that it gives you an opportunity to do what you were going to do anyway. <laughs> right. And, and and even during those times where right. I was deployed, I love that. <laughs> even during those times where I was deployed, unfortunately, I would see other men and women having those challenging times where that fondness kind of makes them stray, you know, and if anything, that kind of was a, a visible, tangible thing that I could see that made me really be thankful for what I already had in, in, in Renee. And that was really instrumental in, in those times of, of separation, you know. Yeah. And I think a part of even being a Christian right. woman, I think sometimes women think that sex is not important. Intimacy is not important. And so I think that if those needs are met when you're together, when you have to be apart, you're not going away with this void. And I think that the I think the biggest part of that void has to be filled with your relationship with the Lord. And then it puts less stress right. on the other person. But when you're empty spiritually and then you're apart from your spouse, it makes it easier for you to use that as an outlet to do things that are not pleasing to the Lord or to your commitment to your marriage. Right. That's phenomenal. That That's awesome because I was going to ask you, Renee, how did you have a routine of how you just maintained um, your time while Gil was away as a married Christian woman? What were some nuggets that were important for you to maintain, you know, uh, when you have a husband that's um, in the service? I think the first thing is your identity. I think that you have to know who you belong to mm. and who you are. Because then your identity doesn't become my husband or my children. It becomes your relationship with God. And then there, therefore, wow. you can find value in something that's permanent. Ooh. Because when we find our identity in being a wife or in a career or in anything else, those things are always very, very unstable. But when we make our identity, our relationship with God, it allows us right. to see that time. I'm like, I felt like whenever God allowed us to be a part, that was God saying, Renee, there are some areas of you that I need to deal with. So I'm going to let Gil be gone so you can work on you. Right. And then God would tell Gil the same thing. Um, there are some things about you that need to work. So it was never, I, I never told the Lord, send him away because I need to work on me. But he always allowed us to have that time of, because we were so young when we got married, we were 21. Right. So there's a lot of things about our identity that hadn't really been established. And so I felt that God gave us that time to really learn how to be okay with who we were and okay to be that we, I was enough by myself, but then with him, we could be something great for the kingdom of God. Right. Right. That's awesome. And Gil, on your end, kind of the same question, you know, um, how, what was it like for you to be away and how did you, you know, just maintain your strength to, um, you know, hold out in terms of a man of God, um, being, being not only faithful, but, um, continuing to know that there's a love of your life, you know, back at home. Did you have a routine? Did you have certain things that you wanted to do or did do to maintain that stability? Until oh, you got back together. Oh, absolutely. And just like Renee said, one of the, the major things for me was working on my relationship with God. You know, it's easy to get consumed in the family life where you just almost lose yourself and forget about how important your own individual right. spiritual walk is, especially as a man. Because while I was working, yeah, I had those things to keep me busy, pretty busy. But when you have that downtime, you have to decide what you're going to do with it. You know, and I decided yeah. I was going to invest in, in a couple <laughs> right. of things. I was going to invest in my mind, which was schooling and that type of thing, my body, which was working out in my spiritual side, you know, and that was my relationship with God. So in those times of deployment, it seems like I was actually able to really focus on that relationship and really dive in, you know, because you don't have all the other commitments that go along with, you know, I don't have the, my family with me. It's not that it's a burden. It was more like, you have responsibilities. So once those responsibilities are not there, what are you going to do with that right. excess time? Right. So I decided, you know, I was going to really devote myself to the word, you know, knowing it for myself and, and reading and studying. And, and it's amazing how during those times of reading and studying, God will reveal things about me, surprisingly, <laughs> not about Renee, but about me that I needed to do and to change and to be better at. So when I did go home, it was almost like, I was a new person 
And and it was been so many times that she would say that she was like, wow, something is different. Yeah. You know, sometimes it was the physical side of working out and all that. But then she could see a lot of the spiritual changes in me as well. Because mm-hmm. Gil loves music. And for me, he always would come home with new worship music and different types of expressions of a Christian, you know, wow. the one group you brought home. Um, mm-hmm. Back in the day was yeah. DC Talk. DC Talk, <laughs> you know, just things that I would have never thought of. And, and like, the, new, <laughs> the, new thing, the idea was right. you know, we had my, right. we had our daughter and then we had my Two sisters. Kids, yeah. So it was always the kids learning how to be calm with them, learning how not to raise my voice, learning how to discipline because I was not really the discipline yeah. and Gil was. And so he said, I'm going to be gone. And if you don't do your part while I'm gone, it's going to be harder for them when I come back. And so I just feel right. like if you're a part, you can use that time. Right. You can waste it or you can invest it. And I felt like we tried to make sure that when we were apart, we invested our time wisely. Wow, this is powerful. Now, the, the things that you all know and have learned, especially being married for so long, do the, the, the children, even the ones that you took on and adopted, do they um, embrace these um, principles and, and these ideals as married, um, as a married couple, if any of them are married? No. <laughs> I will say that's why I said they are biggest struggle. <laughs> I'm just gonna be transparent. We said we're gonna be hot. Um, I think that everyone has a different mantle on their life. And I can say that sometimes the people yeah, talk that's to good. you are the ones that can be the biggest distraction because when the enemy knows he can't attack your marriage, he yeah. will try to attack you through the things that are the closest right. to, important you to you and important to you. And, and sometimes that, and most of the time it could be your children, whatever it is, right. he's going to, if he can't get to you, he's going to attack the people closest to you. The thing that you care about. And the thing that you care about the most. And so I think that, right. especially in this generation, they have pr- purposed in their heart not to be like us, this generation. And as a result of them purposing in their heart not to be like us, the very thing that makes yeah. us who we are is our relationship with Christ. And it, it breaks my heart to see so many children who were raised in godly Christian homes turn their backs on the on the gospel and on God. But I think that as a parent, you can't. This lady talked to me one day. Yeah. She said, baby, you can't take all the credit when they do good or all the responsibility when they do bad. So I think that I would have to say that. I believe right. that until the, until That's we see good. the glory, the story isn't over. And so, where people That's are amazing. right now. So, um, no, I was saying where yeah. people are right now has nothing to do where they will be. But no, I believe yeah. keep going. What we taught them will produce a harvest mm. of of abundance. of abundance when they choose to walk in it. Right, right. So. And I think that's phenomenal. Um, and I know this is different from the couples that you do mentor and or um, help out. You know, I'm sure they receive these nuggets. What are some of the challenges that you all have seen that's been common among um, married couples um, nowadays or throughout your time helping other couples? What are some common challenges and what's maybe a nugget or two that's important for us to learn to combat those challenges? You want to start? You say your favorite one. I'll, I'll favorite. start off. And I would say, I would say probably number one that okay. I would notice is communication. Yes. When I say communication, it's amazing yeah. how in this time and day and time of social media, everybody is communicating. Everybody knows how to use it. But most people don't use it effectively. You yeah. know, when we say effectively, we're talking about right. two things that we, we like to teach couples and that we work with that we can share is we teach them to be an active listener. That means being able to listen to what your partner is saying, not what you thought they heard, but what they actually said and take right. it and sometimes even mirror that back to them to make sure you understood what they said. That's important. Because if you don't understand it or you interpret it wrong, Mm. it's going to cause a conflict. So that's what we mean when we say active listening. 
not what you thought you heard, but what they actually said and what your purpose is to, is to understand them. Right. Doesn't mean you have right. to agree with them. It just means you have to understand where they're coming from and what they're saying. And then the second part of that active listening is being able to be assertive in your communication. You know, the assertive part doesn't necessarily mean you're being aggressive and assertive in that sense. Assertive means being able to communicate what you want and what you right. need from their partner and being able to articulate that to them to where they can understand it because you've been active listening. And then you can effectively communicate it to be understood. And then you, all you're doing is telling them what you need from them. And then it's just a, a, an exchange. It's a back and forth that goes on. And that's probably one of the linchpins right. in most of the relationships and the, the couples that we've worked with. You know, that's always a foundational thing that we share with them. Even if you feel you're doing it well, it's always good to know that you're doing it well. So that's something that that God has really shown us during this time that is so important. And, and I would yeah. say that's your identity. Mm -hmm. I think that if you go into a relationship with another person and you are not sure of who you are, you're going to put the weight of that on the other person. Mm -hmm. To think that oh, I'm going to get married yes, and I'm going to be yes. happy and I'm going to be the best. No. <laughs> Marriage is work. It's a commitment. It requires you bringing something to the relationship and not coming to it. If I'm coming to the marriage, right. coming, if I'm getting married because I think that's going to make all my problems go away, don't get married. <laughs> I right. think that people come to marriage with a right. very false expectation of what marriage right. is. It's an opportunity for God to use two people to do one mission. That's what I believe, Mir. So I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of women, wow. do, we fantasize it. Romanticize we it. We romanticize it. We make it Disney and that's great, right. but this is not, it's, right. it's ministry. It's two people coming together for one purpose. Is that reality? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And I think of I love that. we have a lot of reality TV. Yeah, like I love that. You I have love people we can touch and talk to and walk alongside you and be a part of your life. And that's what our heart is, is to, to walk alongside people. Right. That's fantastic. I love that. I love that. So, um, you know, a lot of a lot of um, people have had, you know, different ups and downs in terms of um, abusive relationships, relationships that have been mentally or emotionally challenging. Um, and there might be someone that's even listening and viewing tonight or will view or listen um, at another time. And you're in this emotional or challenging or abusive relationship, et cetera. And, and I guess I can go to two extremes. I can go to one extreme where, okay, you need to get out. But the other extreme, I'm going to be a little bit lighter. And that extreme is if you have someone that is the emotional or mental abuser, um, how important is it to either get counseling or leave? Or what would be your take if it's considered light, not as extreme? This is just a hypothetical question. What are your thoughts about couples that go through that? And, you know, what would be some directives for couples that are involved in those types of situations on the lighter end? The first thing we always ask is that, are you safe? You know, if someone is not in an environment where it's safe, then Excellent. you need to get to a safe place. Yeah. Physically, emotionally and spiritually. Um, if physical That's abuse good. is a part of the um, relationship issue, then physical abuse should be not be accepted at any level. A push, a shove. Those are all the beginnings of abuse. And so I, I saw a post one day. It says we need to teach our daughters that it's better to come home versus to come home from a broken marriage versus to be brought home in a casket. So we have to teach women and men Woo! it's not okay to be physically abused. Physical, anyone becoming physical with right. you is an indicator you need to leave. Right. You know, that's, right. you know, that, that, to that, right. that, that regardless of a push or show, it's going to escalate. And so, right. I guess to me, that's the best way to describe it. You know, if it's physical, then it means you need to be safe. You need to be safe physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Right. And that means you may need to relieve that, leave that relationship. Because once someone hits you one time, they're going to hit you again. Right. They hurt you when you're dating. They're going to beat you yeah. and they're, you're their wife. And so, we see, so we're seeing so much of this physical abuse because it's been allowed. We've we taught girls. It's, it's been okay. allowed. That's good. 
It's been allowed. And we teach people it's okay and it's not okay. Gil has never right. pushed me, hit me, shoved me ever. Yeah. And and so you have to set that up for yourself as yeah. a woman. I'm yeah. not going to be pushed. I'm not going to be physically, unless it's affectionately, I'm not going to be um, physically um, touched right. by a man. Right. Right. And the thing about it is, um, I think you hit it on the nail earlier. You know, some people don't know their identity. Yeah. And so because of that, whatever rooted issue that they have had in their life, that's not healthy Mm -hmm. begins to surface and it screws up their identity. It screws up their thought process and and so forth. And so I think that's connectedly as well. And and their perception. So listen, I want to talk about really quick about. Yeah. It, it affects their perception. No, go, go ahead, Renan. I'm listening. It, it affects their perception of what just because your mother got hit, your your cousin got hit, fighting is not okay. And, and I think that when you establish that in the beginning, it makes it easier for when right. that happens for you. Because the longer you stay, the harder it is to leave. And so it's better to establish that in the beginning. Later, right. It's not okay unless he's your father and you're getting a spanking because you're disobedient. A man right. shouldn't be hitting. And, and if I can say right. one thing on top of that, right. is from a, a male perspective, yeah. I would even say, one, it's important for them not to mimic what they, like Renee said, has been taught or that they've seen. They have to make that choice themselves that I'm not going to do ABC, whatever that may have been that they've seen, whether it's abusive relationships and those types of things to not become victim to that, that pattern. You know, and to break that cycle, right. but also on the flip side of that, where men shouldn't physically abuse, I think it's just as important that women be more conscious of their verbal yes. abuse. Because yes. uh, we've yes. had couples that we've worked with that no, I have yet to meet a man that can out talk a woman. Yes, Lord. and I'm not being chauvinistic. <laughs> I'm just true. being honest, you know, and so therefore women are very skilled with their words. You know, it's, it's documented scientific proof how women use multiple words more than men every single day where guys will manifest that maybe physically something that they can't say verbally. Well, I think that's something that has to be conscious even in the relationship that women have to be conscious that they don't use their physical word abuse, you know, to, to hurt and to maim and to do damage because Men are very sensitive. You know, we may not believe it, but men are very where women are emotionally strong and physically weaker than men. Men are physically stronger and emotionally weaker. That's something that we've noticed also in the times that we've worked with guys and and couples. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I believe that 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 that's amazing. You know, I, I and even as I hear and listen to you all talk, and those of you that are listening and viewing at, at whatever point, you you all have you all have survived a couple decades together, and we don't see a lot of long lasting strong relationships like we used to, like our parent days are. Yeah. But I just want people to know that they still exist Absolutely. and that it's still possible and that and we, we like can't them. believe the lies of the enemy that it's not part of what we're supposed to do. Can you guys touch on that for a minute? You know, it, it makes me so sad um, because there's there's so op- many opportunities to use your voice and use your life. And so many of us are using it the wrong way. I think that we have to, the Bible says to hunger and thirst after righteousness. If you believe that marriage is real, then you need to connect with other couples and other communities where you can see what you want being modeled. Stop watching shows about people who are fighting and breaking up. And then that's all you watch and you wonder why you don't believe it's real. You have to be careful about that's why we create the podcast. So now there's no excuse. You have people and uh, in a community and other people who are trying to do what you do. So a part of it, the Bible says evil association destroys good intentions. We have to stop watching all those negative, divisive, destructive programs and music and start spending time with and listening to and pursuing people who are accomplishing what we say that we really want. So some of the responsibility of what's out there is on us. If we would pursue and request and make 
um, healthy relationships a priority, that there will be more of it available to people. So I think that we just have to be intentional about really pursuing what we say we want rather than just taking what people give us. And absolutely. And, and even on the, that's another, right. Another I agree with that. A point is when people decide that they want something different and even then the relationships that they may have that are a blessing to others, just like you said, we spend a lot of time together, but they have to expose themselves to other people to decide that say, Hey, I may not have it all together and I may not know all the answers and, and get everything 100% right but I'm willing to share what we do know. And like Renee said, that was really what birthed the podcast that, that I decided moment that we said, you know what, we're going to share and start where we're at yes. and put it out there. And hopefully it will bless someone and that they can glean from it. Like you said, because most people don't know where they can go to get help in a time mm -hmm. when they really need it. And sometimes you can go to a church and it's not to bash any particular churches or anything like that. Right. But sometimes our churches aren't, equipped to deal with people on a more personal level right you can call up and say hey i'm having this problem with my marriage what do you think or is there something you know that you can share with me and my husband or me and my wife that can do something and that kind of what is what really started us on this journey where we said you know what we're just going to put it out there yeah. you know you you mentioned earlier about our daughter listen to her. our daughter's 28 and she's not married but we're not going to be around forever right. yeah so we decided Everything that right. we know, we're going to dump it out and yeah. we're going to stick it on the internet and it's yeah. going to last forever. And it's going to yeah. be out there for who knows yeah. how long, you know, to where somebody years and years from now can look it up and say, hey, I heard something about communication or conflict resolution or interpersonal relationships that can help me. And they find us on YouTube right. because you can find all the stuff on YouTube and, mm. and on the podcast platforms. That's what we really, really our desire is. And that's something that we think can benefit and help other people. Right. That's beautiful. Wow. 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 Mm -hmm. So um, I want people to be able to definitely connect with you all and to know how to get in touch with you all. And for those of you that are listening and viewing, we're definitely going to be posting um, their flyers and information throughout my timeline this week. Um, and then you can also catch the replay at Vision TV. And I'll send that date as well. But how how can couples whether let me ask you this first. Do you only deal with single engaged couples or married couples as well all of the above <laughs> See, i think we, we say you think you want to get married okay. I mean, you know, relationships <laughs> it's relationships with people god and food if you're dating if you are married. thinking about dating if you're married if you're divorced so basically the tools to help you have healthy relationships are available at every level and so and like you said we don't do this because our marriage is perfect or because we're perfect yeah. We feel that we're growing in this yeah. process and we're right. learning. And so we're just sharing that as we go along. And so we're, we want to help anyone right. wants help versus trying to force a particular, on people. yeah, a particular area, even, even then, because before you get married, yeah. you're single, but those same traits and abilities like communication, like we right. said earlier are going to be what's necessary when you do get married and to stay married. Yeah. And even if something happens, yeah. Is right. happening that's very right. great in your marriage or your relationship right now. This is the time that you can use to say, Where am I a little off? Or what can I do differently? Or what can I do new that I may not know or that I may be doing, but I don't know why I'm right. doing it? And that's what it's really about is working with couples, right. singles, work with we we worked with them all. So we 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 welcome anyone that wants help and we'll just make ourselves yeah. available. And families, because I think a big part of it, family yeah, dynamic. that's fantastic. That's a big issue yeah. is especially in our communities, because most of us grew up in very dysfunctional mm -hmm. backgrounds. And so we don't realize our family is dysfunctional because we're probably dysfunctional, too. And so it takes for us to kind of step back and, and we're military. So we've seen so many different families, been around so many different people. So I think that it's opened our eyes to the fact that just because it's the way it's always been done, it doesn't mean it that's right. And that's what we want to help all of us with. Right. Us included. That's good. Yeah, I love that. And I love the fact that that you mentioned that family component. That is just so, so key, so awesome. And especially for blended family. Oh, yes. And, and that's, especially for blended family. And, and that's something we, we actually did yeah. an episode yeah. on 
with a couple that is a blended family. Yeah. And, you know, because we're not a blended family in the traditional sense. So we try to find people or even a community, somebody in our community right. that can. And we bring them on the show to share what they know, you know, because obviously we don't have all the answers, but right. somebody out there who's going to listen to this does. Yeah. And we will welcome you onto the show and we can have a conversation with right. what we're doing right now. Because we do, we have people who have different backgrounds. Yeah, we, that's beautiful. We all get together and share our stories because we've had single people, married people, divorced people, because we all need to have a platform to share the stories and the things we go through so the other people don't have to go through the same thing. And that's what a big part of it is. It's just being transparent. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's good. So how how share your social media platform so we can make sure that the listeners and viewers can get in touch with you um, no matter what level of relationship that they're at. Right. So. I'll say this. This is my wife's area of expertise. She <laughs> is amazing at this. So all the credit goes to her for anything that you see out there okay. and, and any of the social media platforms. All I do is take the pictures and do the recordings. <laughs> Renee does everything else. <laughs> Well, we are a great team. Um, we're on every social okay. media platform, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest. Um, and it's uh, my name, Renee M. Beavers. Um, and for the podcast, we're on every okay. single podcasting platform. And it is Rich Relationships with Gil and Renee. Um, our website is richrelationshipsus.com. And our email is richrelationships.us at gmail.com. We would love to be a part of your community for conferences, women, uh, marriage Anything. conferences. Um, just we, we, a part of it is just being there. Yeah. People, however people need help. Um, everybody, every pastor is not, doesn't have a heart for, for marriage. And so people want to have conferences and things. You need somebody that is their passion. Right. It's our passion. It's what we love to do. Um, I feel like I was created to be a wife. Um, yeah. I'm really good at that. Um, the other stuff I'm still working. I'm working on being a wife too, but I just feel like that's yeah. the, the mantle on my on my life is she's doing great on all of them. Oh, thank you. So are you. <laughs> yeah. I try it. That is awesome. <laughs> I'm loving this. I'm I'm just super excited right now. Yeah. <laughs> listen. <laughs> so listen. Be the best version of yourself and be so because when you become who you are supposed to be. He will find you. So many women, because I did hair for so many year, years, women feel like, well, I'll That's be happy right. when I get married. No, you need to be happy with, have joy about who you are because that's what's going to be attractive to men. It's, it's not just the way right. you look, it's how you feel about you. And I think that's the most important part is really loving who you that's are. Right. Just by yourself, just alone. And he will find you. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's awesome. I love it. Listen, um, for those of you that are listening and watching, don't forget, Renee does also have books. Now, Renee, your books and your books and your other products are on the website? They're on Amazon and on the website. Um, the, the podcast will eventually be a book. Um, we, we just okay. want to make sure that we build a community around it because we thought okay. it was better to do the podcast first before the book. So we say podcast, books, and then retreats. That's our heart. But all of my books, if you go on Amazon, you can actually find the book. Okay. Um, 21 Day Journey Cookbook, Freedom from Food, and um, Tragedy to Majesty, which is the first book I wrote. This is like a devotional. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Listen, can you guys just share a final word out there, whether they're a couple, whether they're not a couple, married, single, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart um, as we wrap up tonight's show? You want to start or you want me to start? You go first. I'll start about saying you're not alone. <laughs> regardless of what you may be going through, regardless of what you've experienced mm. from the past and even what's coming in the future, you don't have to do it alone. And this time we have so many ways to connect to people, but it's still so many people who are out there feeling like they're by themselves and doing it by themselves. And nobody has to. You know, we have a saying in our on our show, we end our show every every mm. single time we're stronger together and that's what our motto is so we are always going to want yeah. anyone who wants to join us and even if we can be a part of your journey like renee mm -hmm. says a lot is we're available and that's all you have to do is make yourself available so again i would ask say you're not alone you're not by yourself we got your back yeah and i would say that 
while you may think that your issues are a secret, everyone around you can see it. So get some help. Let someone help Ooh, you work it. through what's going on. Because we all have growth areas. We all have strengths. And unless you are like Enoch, where he just took you out of here, we're still all under construction. So let down the pride, right. let down the fear of people knowing you don't have it together. Because guess what? None of us have it together. And like Gil said, we're stronger together and let's grow together because we're going to be transparent about the fact that we're all a little jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> and God doesn't yeah. want us to say Yes. That. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's good. Absolutely. Listen, thank you all so much for coming on tonight. I cannot wait to post oh, more of your information so that the listeners and viewers can get it. Um, remember, everybody, when, when we're talking about rich relationships, um, Gil and Renee, they, they I mean, like they say, they're not perfect, but they got it down packed and they're working towards it. And I mean, I just pray that those of you that are um, have had experiences where you don't believe in marriage anymore. I pray that you believe again. I pray that if you are in a marriage that you'll strengthen it. And I pray that you will take advantage of people that are sincere about the foundation of Christ in their relationship so that it will stand the test of time. That's what this is about. So I'm definitely wanting to make sure that people uh, watch the broadcast. Tell us one more time what night the, bro the, the podcast is on. It well, it's it we upload it technically on Sunday night, um, but we always promote it as Monday night. Okay, but the thing about podcasts is active listening, so it's going to be up every Monday. You can yeah, listen sure. to it whenever you want. Um, and it's act, it's not it's passive listening, you don't have to like stop what you're doing, you can do it while you're driving, while you're working out, while you're doing your chores. Right. We like to say, just stick us in your ears and let's Woo! grow together. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. 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 Thank you so much. Listen, everybody, thank you for joining tonight, the triumphant show. Thank you for being patient with us this week or these, this last couple of weeks as we've tried to handle some of our technical difficulties, but God always wins. So I'm so happy that uh, my guests on tonight are champions in the kingdom. Uh, make sure that you follow them. I am going to post their information once the show is over so that you can connect and stay connected and allow God to speak to your hearts through these two um, kings and queens of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Gil. Thank you, Renee. I appreciate you all so much. Love you. We've got to see you again as we get close to Valentine's Day. We'll talk some more okay. and keep being, uh, keeping encouraging everybody. How about that? Okay. Yes. Whenever Sounds you good. want. Your baby. All right, everybody. That awesome. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. That Thank wraps up our show you. for tonight. We will see you next week. Love you guys so much. And we'll see you all next week, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here on the Triumphant Radio Show. Take care. See you later.